Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. Sit back, relax, stay sinful. Story number one. My name is Jenny. I'm a 30-year-old female, and this story took place when I was 13. My mom was a single parent and she had to work two jobs. She worked at a grocery store during the day, and during the evening she was a bartender. I was home alone a lot, but it was okay because I was used to it. I could cook myself dinner and walk back and forth to school and was very responsible for my age. One night I was watching TV while eating ice cream and someone knocked on the front door. I was wondering who it could be as my friends never came out this late and my mom would never use her key to get in. I opened the door and it was a man standing there with his hands in his jacket pockets. I said, Hello? He replied, Hello, young lady. Are your parents home? Stupidly, I said, No, my mom isn't home right now. You'll have to come back tomorrow. And he then said with a surprised smile on his face, Oh, you're all alone then? I said, Yeah, I am. He then replied with, Okay, young lady, you have a nice night. Don't get into any trouble. He then walked away and I closed the door. He seemed friendly enough. He was a little funny looking though he was balding and had old 70s style glasses on with a mustache and bags under his eyes like he never slept. About 10 minutes passed and there was another knock on the door. I got up to answer it but before I opened the door, something told me to put the chain on too. I don't know why but my gut told me to do that. It was strange because we don't really use the chain that much, but I'm glad I did. Because as soon as I opened the door, it was pushed in, but abruptly stopped because of the chain. Before I could even say or do anything, I looked through the crack of the door to see the same man again. He said in a startled voice, Oh, hey there, I just wanted to make sure you were okay. It was like he knew he failed getting inside the house tried to play off any suspicion by speaking quickly and making it seem like he didn't obviously try to come inside. I didn't really understand how dangerous what just happened really was, but still I was freaked out and wanted my mom to come home as soon as possible. An hour went by. I was still thinking about what happened so I turned a movie on. I was doing the best I could to keep my mind occupied. When I heard, Psst, let me in. I need to tell you something. It was the same man once again. He was opening the letterbox and speaking through it. I shouted, leave me alone. The letterbox closed, then the man started to bang on the front door, screaming, let me in, you fucking bitch. While slamming the door handle up and down trying to get in, he continued to scream at me. I just stood back crying and praying he didn't get in somehow. Eventually he gave up and left. My mom came home 30 minutes after to find me crying. I told her everything that happened. We told the police, but unfortunately they never found the man. I look back and think how grateful I am, and the fact that I put the chain on the door. I hate to think what the man would have done if he didn't manage to get in. Story number two. This happened to me a few weeks ago, and after telling someone the full story, I realized it was a bit creepy and decided to share. I also just moved a week ago and haven't looked back. I was living just outside a major city in the Pacific Northwest, in an area known for being a bit shady. Some petty crimes, but definitely not a place to walk with headphones on or be out at night. I'm in my mid-twenties and female. I box for fun and have become very aware of my surroundings, given the homeless issue around here. I decided to go to a bar five blocks up the road, since it was just one of those nights. I had one too many and started walking home, around 11pm on a weeknight. There's no one on the streets and few cars. When I cross the second street I see a man start to follow me. I decided to keep walking and get my pepper spray out of my backpack. Suddenly there's a man up next to me 
in a dark puffy coat saying hello and asking how I'm doing. My pace quickens and my body goes cold. As I pick up my pace, he is shoulder to shoulder with me. My arms are crossed holding my pepper spray. He keeps talking to me, brushing shoulders. The man's telling me how beautiful I am and rambling on and on. I don't remember anything else he said due to my adrenaline and panic as I was alone in the dark and intoxicated. I get to my street and there's about 10 stairs that go up from the street to my house. I start to turn to go up the stairs. I see him start to reach towards me, so I turn and book it up the stairs. I hear him screaming at me. Unsure if he's following me, I don't look back, punch in the door code and lock the door behind me. My heart's racing as I stood at the door. I was praying he didn't see where I went and that he wouldn't bang on the door or yell and wake my roommates. All is silent. I walk up to my room, lock my door, and tears start streaming down my face. I called the apartment manager the next day to view an apartment eight miles away at what's known as a much safer, quieter area. I took the apartment and moved out two weeks later, so to the bum who wanted to make sure I got home safe, I very much made it without you, and please, let's not meet again. Story number three. This happened when I was 19, almost 10 years ago. I don't like to tell people this story because, number one, I didn't handle the situation correctly. Number two, I didn't want to look stupid at the time. And finally, number three, I genuinely didn't know what to do about it. The time this story took place, I was living with my parents. We weren't getting along so I worked nights to avoid them or hung out with friends until I knew they'd be asleep. I was closing up at work pretty late on a Saturday night. While waiting for my checkout, I go to check my phone and I see I have a voicemail from an unknown caller. The voicemail goes as follows. Hey, my name. I'm upstairs in your house right now sitting on the blue couch next to the weight bench. These gaming chairs are pretty sweet. Need to upgrade your TV though. Anyway, I'm looking into your bedroom. Come home soon so we can discuss where I'll be sleeping tonight. This person had described all the stuff in the game room area of the house, which was right next to my bedroom. I could feel the color drain from my face, and my manager asked if I was okay. I answered yes, I'm just tired, even though I was completely terrified. I deleted the voicemail, and I know that was dumb. I went to my friend's house to stay the night for a few weeks and only went home to grab clothes during the day. I continued to get calls from an unknown number for a few months. Sometimes they would hang up as soon as I answered, and other times they would ask what I was doing or wearing. I never recognized the voice. I even put it on speakerphone in front of a friend, asking if they knew who it was, but they never did. I never had my friends over to my parents' house because my mom and stepdad are terrible people, so it wasn't one of my friends. I asked my ex-boyfriend about it thinking he was trying to nurture dependence. He said no, but I could come stay with him for a while. I declined. My best guess is it was one of my stepdad's friends thinking it was a hilarious joke. My parents ended up getting a divorce four months after all of this started so I moved out and the calls stopped. I asked my mom about it recently, and she said she didn't know who it was and was very angry that I didn't tell her about it while it was happening. Creepy mystery guy. Let's not meet again. Story number four. While I was at school, I decided to get a job at a small grocery store in my town. My manager was flexible with my schedule, and I needed the cash for gas money. I was trained by this man that was very weird. The vibe he gave off always scared me, and I always wrote it off to him just being socially awkward. Eventually I got pretty comfortable with him being around, and in fact I would ask him for help with anything I didn't know, 
because he knew everything there was to know about the job. A couple months after I started, my boss called me into the office as soon as I got in. She was crying. Another store manager was there too, and he was also quiet and visibly shook up. They told me that the guy had turned himself into the police that night before for murder. There had been an infamous murder in the town over four years ago, where a woman had been stabbed while jogging on a trail around 7 p.m. It had turned into a cold case and pretty much everyone had moved on from there. Apparently this guy had done it and kept it a secret for four years, but the guilt finally got to be too much. The worst part is that no one would have guessed it either. He was always nice and helpful with everyone. The customers were so upset by it for months. The week before he turned himself in, he bought a cherry wine soda because I had never had one and he had me try it. it. Took me a long time to be able to wrap my head around this. It's scary that you never really know who you're around and what they're truly capable of. Story number five. Once I was driving through the mountains on my way home from work. It was already getting dark. After a curve, I saw a man in the middle of the road standing still. His long black hair covered his entire face, and he was unmoving. He looked dirty. He gave me chills up my spine. I stopped the car right in front of him, hyperventilating. He didn't seem to care. I noticed he was barefoot, and he just kept staring in absolute silence. After a while, he calmly approached my window. I was stupid enough to lower it and he started babbling strange noises difficult to understand. I soon freaked out, but he didn't look harmed or in any danger, so I decided to leave the fuck out of there. I started the engine again and was slowly moving away, when out of nowhere he decided to jump on the car and started shouting loudly and laughing. I almost had a heart attack at that point. I'm a petite young woman, and if things had turned ugly I wouldn't have stood a chance. I accelerated and eventually got off and I got home safe. By the time I opened the door to my house, my body was still shaking. These things never happen, ever. Later I was told by my neighbors that he was once a psychiatrist. He lost his mind years ago and since wanders around the mountains. He is often just beside the road at any given time and just stands there for hours. Dirty and spooky as hell. He has a brother that looks after him and pays his bills and whatever. Creep in the mountains. Maybe you are harmless. Get yourself some shoes. Cut your hair. And let's never meet again. Story number six. My mother lived in Michigan for most of her life. And of course attended the schools and universities of Detroit, Michigan. Once she got into university, she took interest in a good looking man who was a year ahead of her. His name was John. She told me that he was charming and even spoke with her a few times. As a charming man with his looks, almost every girl was swooning over him, including my mom. Now my angel of a mother is quite shy. She wanted to ask John out, but she never mustered up the courage. At some point in time, this man asked my mother's sister if she wanted a ride home. Knowing her, she happily obliged and hopped into his car. My mother's sister got home safely, and my mom greeted John from her doorstep as my mom's sister walked through the door. After a few months of seeing this charming young man around campus, my mother would wave and say hello. John was even in some of her classes, for a while. On July 30th, 1969, John Norman Collins was arrested for killing numerous women, between one and seven total. My mom said she never felt such disgust for a human being due to the fact she was in such close proximity to a cold-blooded murderer. Her sister even rode in his car. Both my mother and her sister's names could have ended up on the list of women he killed. John, I wish you never met my mother. Random coincidence. John was arrested on the same day as my birthday, July 30th. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, 
share and subscribe for future videos, my friends. If you want to share your story, email it to the sinful savant at gmail.com. I'll leave my email in the info box below as well. I hope everyone's week has gone well. Until we meet again, stay sinful. <laughs>